Baker. On the right-hand side, the Wolves led by Bill McGarry, their manager. Tough, tour, uncompromising, and a man who hates to lose. But old buddies there on the left with Ron Saunders, the manager of Manchester City, who led Norwich out when they were beaten last year in this same final by Spurs. In brilliant tracksuits, Wolves with the black tops and the gold the trousers. Manchester City in their sky-blue tracksuits with red trimmings. turf now trying to give the opposition the impression that they are relaxed and easy and there's one man who would be relaxed and that's Derek Dugan a mixture of uh, youngsters and seasoned players. Manchester City here have won so much over the last six years or so. And here comes now the president of the Football Association, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. With the various officials of the Football League. Some of you there, Skipper, to Francis Lee. And Rodney Marsh. A little hard of hearing, it seems. Tommy Booth and Dennis Law. Can't get over just how relaxed Dennis Law looks. And that sort of spirit must go right through a side. Invaluable to a side of Wembley to have the spirit of Dennis Law about the dressing room. Colin Bell and Ron Saunders, the Manchester City manager. That'll be the turn of uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers with their skipper Mike Bailey. Sunderland. A side that uh, is coming to form, although they've won only 
two of their last eight games, the Wolves, will badly need the impetus of a good start here in this cup final, which uh, promises so much between two sides who love to attack. With Derek Dugan, inevitably a word with him. And I think if, even if His Royal Highness didn't fancy a word with Dugan, the Doug would certainly be prepared to have a word or two with His Royal Highness. David Wagstaff, who could well cause so much damage as one of the great natural wingers in the game, and Bill McGarry, the Wolves manager. over the one thing that uh, these 22 players are itching to do now is to get out there and flex their muscles and uh, stretch themselves and ease the tension out of their bodies because they may have looked relaxed but underneath I'm quite sure there are little quivers of apprehension referee uh, Mr. Wallace of crew and his two lines are being uh, presented there to His Royal Highness so back to the Royal Box for His uh, Royal Highness is now just waiting for the word to be told that the tracksuits can come off and the kick-in can start. the Manchester City side is as you would have read in this morning's newspapers the only doubt all week was whether Francis Lee at number 10 would be fit he'd been out of the game since the semi-finals when he injured knee ligaments against Norwich City but uh, Ron Saunders decided that it was a gamble worth taking and Francis Lee is in the only question really that uh, the Wolves manager Bill McGarry had to make was whether or not he would play Kenny Hibbett or Barry Powell in the midfield, and as you can see, the number eight shirt there has gone to Kenny Hibbert. Wolves team, the only uh, decision that manager Bill McGarry had to make was whether or not uh, uh, Kenny Hibbert or Barry Powell would play in the middle of the field and the vote went to Hibbert with Powell the substitute and here is Hibbert his brother of course Terry plays for Newcastle United I suppose we could well have a brotherly double at Wembley uh, with Kenny here and Terry of course still very much involved with Newcastle in the FA Cup what an afternoon for Gary Pearce. He's had only 14 games, or this is rather the 14th game for, for uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, now taking the place of Phil Parks, who's injured. Tremendous ordeal for Pearce. So we come to the toss-up. Mr. Wallace, the referee from Crewe, his linesman, Mr. Williams of Sheffield, and Mr. Shepherd of Dunstable. The pennants with the two skippers. Mike Summerby on the right. Best of luck, lads. Please enjoy it and have a good game. Best of luck. Well, the best of luck comes there from uh, Mr. Wallace. Let's hope he has a good game as well because uh, he and his two linesmen are the third team here at Wembley this afternoon.
Chelsea to Kent now in the Royal Box, waiting for the start of this 1974 League Cup final, talking to Mr Len Shipman. So the League Cup final is underway. Manchester City kicking off, attacking the goal to our left. Sky blue shirts and white shorts, Wolves against them in their old golden black. And the first touch now for Wagstaff with those long raking through balls of his, which will need to be a little more accurate than that, some five or so yards behind Derek Dugan. But it's Donaghy then with the throw for Manchester City. Palmer getting in quickly before Law could settle on that ball. But now it's Marsh. Free kick given against Manchester City. Four Wolves. And already Dugan and Richards are in that uh, Manchester City penalty area. Palmer now crossing the long ball, but uh, not really accurate enough. Just going off the top of the head of uh, Colin Bell. Now can Wagstaff turn Pardo one way and the other. Pardo timing it well. And the ball just flicking off Wagstaff, giving... Manchester City the throw. Parkin in first. And Doyle was there too. Hibbett with a long kick, stopped again by Mike Doyle for Manchester City. Here's Summerby. Another decisive battle there with Parkin against Summerby. And Parkin went in very hard indeed. And I think the referee's saying one more of those and you'll go into the book. And some of you felt the weight of that. I'm bound to say I felt almost that uh, Parkin made contact with the ball there. But it's a free kick to Manchester City. It'll be Doyle taking it, Law wanting it. And it's coming towards Dennis Law with that jackknife header of his again. Parkin had to head that one away. For the Wolves to Wagstaff very deep indeed. A long raking kick and Doyle was holding on to Richards there but coming away with the ball. Parking in again before Summerby, and now Rodney Marsh. Well, he was stopped in one form or other by Munro, and there's the first touch of the ball for Gary Pearson. He'd be glad to have that on his 23rd birthday and first appearance at Wembley. Foul by Booth on Derek Dugan. So another free kick to Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's young two or three yards inside the Manchester City half, and Frank Munro is going to take it. Dugan again, I fancy, might be the target. Sunderland couldn't quite get to it, neither could he at the second time. There's John McCall. Bell, a little toe poke forward, there's McCall again. Dugan in pursuit of this one. Wagstaff trying to retrieve it, and it comes again for Colin Bell for Manchester City. Here's Tony Towers, played forward for Rodney Marsh. Law, keen to get in on the act, and a nice, simple pass, but accurate. Two Towers, Bell, and Summerby waiting on the right. Parkin going in a little hard, but uh, not making the right sort of contact there. Bell towards Towers, he almost got it back to Bell again, and Hibbert loses it. Here's Bell again now. A good piece of tackling back that time by Hibbert. And the pass there from uh, Wagstaff to Sunderland. Here's the one for Dugan. Booth coming across to cover, and Richards again is waiting in the middle. Play for Jeff Palmer, only 19 in his first season for Wolves. And Booth nodding that one away with great authority towards Rodney Marsh. Here's Summerby. Law now sparkling away on the right, wanting the ball and getting it. Marsh again, couldn't quite stop it, but Donaghy was linking up well. Well, he's gone past Palmer, there's the cross, and Pierce might comfortably going down to get it. 
bright red jersey. Monroe, pivot, park in, forward towards Richards, no foul. Richards really contesting everything there with Doyle, and he'll need to because Doyle is a great competitor. But here's John Richards again, trying to squeeze between those uh, Manchester City defenders. Bailey. Wanted, I think, to uh, test McRae, but it'll be a goal kick instead. Mike Bailey, who's not really had the best of luck over the last few seasons with injuries, it really is a sparkling Wembley shirt the Wolves have got. Now Pardo back to Keith McRae, the £100,000 goalkeeper they bought from Motherwell. Only conceded one goal in the last five, McRae, and here's Francis Lee. Bell's head up. And that must just construed, I think, as a push in the back by McCall on Somerby. I think the Wolves player felt that that was some of be backing in on him, but uh, Mr. Wallace's word is the one that counts, and it's a free kick to Manchester City. Just over five minutes gone. Marsh and Towers behind it. Booth is right in there. Now Marsh and Lee working out something. Lee, of course, is fantastic with these kicks. But this time it's Marsh flicking the way there, and Bell tried to knock it down for Lee coming in, but it didn't quite come off. And now it's Jeff Palmer. Sunderland, two of the youngsters in the wall side, and uh, as yet, Wolves can't quite get a rhythm going. Wolves slightly the underdogs, and it's they who will want to settle quickly. So often in cup finals, it is the side that can settle to its game the quicker. It's the one that carries the day. And even as recently last year, again, with Sunderland doing it, it was they who settled the quicker, but here's Sunderland again, stopped by Donachy that time. And now Colin Bell. Law. The nod back for Pardo. Bell. Law again. Bell. And a good interception there by Frank Monroe. Wagstaff. the Manchester City bench. Dugan trying to get away from Booth and being hustled from behind. Wagstaff giving the ball away to Bell and now to Law. Thought he'd taken that a little too far, but it fell for Manchester City. And if the rhythm for the for Wolves is not there at the moment, the tackling is certainly swift and sure, and on that occasion unfair. Marsh putting it through for Lee, and that time Frank Monroe again was there for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Getting through a lot of work in these opening minutes, Monroe. Now taking up a position somewhere close to Law and Lee, and there's Monroe going in again. But a goal kick to Wolves. Dennis Law with 11 goals so far to his credit this season, and considering he got a free transfer last summer from Manchester United, he could hardly have dared to think that he'd be here this afternoon. John Richards and Mike Doyle. Sunderland's getting underneath this one, but it's, it's uh, Marsh's header. Sunderland again, played for Palmer. Richards hope for the right sort of bounce, but Doyle again cut it out. Too high for Lee. The ball doing well. Aware that Monroe was there. Pardo. Park it. And now Wexton. A long raking cross towards Derek Dugan. Nicely down with his head, and that was Sunderland's kick. Bailey in first as Marsh to the ground, and now Dugan for Mac for a Wolves. Bell cutting out that one. But again, Bailey covering a lot of ground there for Wolves, and a lovely pass there by Bailey for Wexler. And 
he's got the cross in as well. Dugan's waiting for it. It's for Dugan. And now for Sunderland. And it just wouldn't fall quickly enough, but then it's actually pushed away by Keith McRae. And that'll make Bulls feel a little better. A beautiful long cross, though, by Wagstaff. Nodded down so accurately by Derek Dugan. And Sunderland couldn't quite get his shot in quickly enough, but even so, it caused McRae a problem or two. So, Donachy there at the near post for Manchester City. Pardo at the far post, Frank Monroe is in there too. And here's Wagstaff with the corner. Monroe is there with the header! Oh, and a free header and a dangerous one from Manchester City's point of view. But straight into the arms of McRae. Pardo, Bell. Well, everybody promised us that it would be quite a spectacle here, and you get the feeling that it's beginning to work out that way with so much space and so much skill out there. Richards. Oh, turning beautifully, and Hibbert has gone on ahead of him. And here's Sunderland linking up with him, and Wolves now look to be a little more into their stride. Hibbert on the far side, and he's got a corner. So much a question of who can settle down the quicker. And Frank Monroe is up here again. Well, he can hardly expect to get another free header, surely. Dugan is at the near post. Here comes the corner again, this time Hibbert with it. And Monroe gets there, and suddenly, oh, and he went off the post! Well, what a turn up there for Manchester City. As they won another ball from a corner, and young Alan Sunderland knocked it against, with a deflection, against the post. So, an uh, escape there for Manchester City, and here they are now with Francis Lee turned in and a little too high. Monroe got that one away as well towards Wagstaff. Here's Pardo. Summerby. Stopped well again by Parker, and there's Dugan getting in there and getting a throw. And stealing five or six yards, which he's not allowed to do. McCall. Well, Richards had got in behind, but the linesman was flagging. Now, whether the whistle went or not, or whether Mr Wallace said uh, we'll allow play to go on, is hard to say. I think he said we'll allow the play to go on, which is... Uh, a good sign that he wants this game to flow. Hibbit making a good run. But the attacking ideas for the moment are coming from Wolverhampton Wanderers and not from Manchester City with those 126 caps in their attack. Wolves who seem to have that little bit of extra bite. Well, Law is the man that uh, Manchester City will be looking for, but it's Frank Monroe in the picture there with him who has done so well so far for Wolverhampton Wanderers. In goes Doyle. Lee looking for space on this side. Back to Donaghy. Talented young Scottish player. Marsh. Bailey backing off him. Slid again here for Willie Donaghy, but stopped once more by Monroe. Having a storming game, Frank Monroe, Bailey, and now Dugan. In goes Bailey again, and he's having a game, and there's the pass. Oh, and it's so nearly. It was a winning pass there for John Richards. Richards had got in behind that Manchester City defence, and that must spell danger. And Mike Bailey, a tremendous ball, getting through so much work in that middle of the field. In fact, Bailey here again is dominating that middle of the field, which is a good sign at the moment for Wolves. Hibbert. Dugan going off in pursuit. Donaghy again. Lee coming hard towards him to get away from the defence. In fact, he tries Dennis Law. Now it's Lee. Trying to get a one-two going with Bell. 
but Wolves, as they come forward, are far more incisive. Uh, City at the moment are trying the fancy things, which at the moment are not quite coming off. But here's Marsh, with a number of blue shirts up for him. And again, Jeff Palmer getting in and timing his tackle work. Bell now, back for Donaghy once more. Law and Summerby on the far side, both wanting it in the air. There's Dennis Law. Marsh knocking it in again. Summerby there too. It might have gone anywhere, but it was a Wolverhampton boot that got it away to Waxhaw. John McCall now for Derek Parkin, and that'll go back to Gary Pierce. What of an hour gone, still no score in this League Cup final. Doyle misdirecting that header under pressure. Dugan trying to find Richards. And Bell turning it back to Keith McRae. the city which Donaghy will take Booth is up there Bell in there too watched by Parkin but it's Booth on the far side who might be the dangerous one and it went down and some of his header stopped there just on the line by Pierce Bell, Marsh, but no, it's Richards. Beautiful balance there by John Richards. And Bale is sweeping past to Wagstaff. Might have played in first time there for Hibbert. Summerby for Manchester City. Bell, Marsh. Accurate pass there for Donaghy, coming up well again. This time it's for Lee. Summerby. And that'll fall for Waxton. Now he's got acres of room ahead of him as the old gold shirts are breaking out quickly. Bailey quickening it beautifully. Sunderland. Doyle coming for him, and that's gone off Doyle, so it'll be a throw to, Man to uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Waxed off. Sunderland played on side, although City were appealing, played on side by Booth. Richards going in, and it was the fist of McRae that got it away. Bailey in now. Now Mike Bailey with a great chance. Stopped by Booth. I think City for a long time there were expecting the short pass, and I think Wolves were hoping for one, but Bailey saw that it was probably better to go on his own. But now it's Lee breaking at the other end for Manchester City. The shot to Bell. such as it was. Well, we've seen one or two little uh, flickers of magic from Rodney Marsh, nothing that uh, really looks very impressive so far. And John Richards has looked as impressive as anybody going forward with some beautiful balanced turns. It'll be Pierce who takes the goal kick. Dugan coming for it, Booth coming with him. Summerby. Towers. Now Dugan. Free kick. Now by Mike Doyle.
So Munro will take this free kick for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Straight at McRae. The free kick from a promising situation wasted. Now it's Rodney Marsh. In goes McCall again. But they're kicking every ball on that bench as well. Tony Book there with the And now Marsh being released by that throw. whether McCall is being uh, cautioned or merely just having a severe word, just a severe word from referee Wallace. But a free kick it had to be. And it's taken already, and Towers blasting one in, but surely they've got to come back, as the referee is still looking at uh, Rodney Marsh. Yes, indeed, he's got to be taken again. Somerby then with the free kick for Manchester City. A little chip in there. And Marsh couldn't quite get the header in. Summerby now with a chance to cross it again, which he takes. Oh, and Pierce was stretching and only half got to that one. Pardo turned in once more. And McCall and Monroe get it back. Now it's young Palmer. Well, that'll fall for Dugan off Towers. To Hibbert. Taken from behind by Marsh. He thought that uh, there was nothing foul about that. My goodness, it could hardly have been closer to the referee than it was. One of the great showmen, Rodney Marsh, for, for all that, whatever you may think about him. He brought a lot of entertainment to a lot of people. And here's Kenny Hibbert all right again. And Monroe with a kick, played along the ground this time. Back to Bailey there. And that's too high, and it's a goal kick. Coming up to halfway through the first half of this uh, League Cup final. And still Manchester City nil, Wolves nil. It's Pardo. And again, McCall is in there. Here, Monroe looking quite formidable at the back at the moment. Frank Monroe. Summerby. Oh, and uh, Parkin chose exactly the right moment to get in there, and here goes Waxdorf. Dugan on ahead of him, Richards up ahead of him too. Sunderland coming up fast, and here's Mike Bailey again. There's the shot by Bailey. A beautiful sweeping move by Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wagstaff inside, and Bailey with a good on-target shot. Taz, Parkin, Hibbert. Good knee to accurate play again by Wolves, trying their luck down the right-hand side with uh, Palmer. Here's Dugan, coming away as he can from uh, Tommy Booth. Oh, he nutmegged him. That was obstruction. And that's an indirect free kick. So Booth goes back to the six-yard area. Mr. Wallace, who's kept a very strict eye on this game so far. It'll be Hibbert with the free kick for Wolves. Richards, Dugan is in there. Sunderland's made the break as well. Not sure what that was meant to be, but uh, Wolves have kept possession. Monroe playing it now for Wagstaff. Played inside again for Bailey. And now Sunderland, the one-two with Bailey again, but Towers always had the chance of getting there first, and here's the chance of a break now for Manchester City. This is Lee with Marsh streaming down the left wing. Crossed inside, and just over the crossbar there, and it was Monroe who put it there. Make his heart go pounding just a little harder, Frank Monroe. A 
brilliant sweeping move by Wolves, a marvellous breakout by Manchester City. And Munro just turning that little cross from Marsh just over his own crossbar. Here's the corner. And Pierce had to use his fist, and Bell tried to lob it back. Munro is there again. And here comes Wagstaff, where so many dangerous things could spring from. Dugan now. Watched by Doyle. An unfair challenge by Pardo. Again, a clumsy one. But again, without dispute, a free kick to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Leading that sun cap at the moment is Keith McRae. It's going to be Derek Park in. Maybe Richards is one he'll aim for, maybe it'll be Dugan, or maybe he won't even take it at all. Well, I don't know how Summerby expects to get away with that. He was, what, two yards off the ball? He's not much more than five or six now, but here's Parkin leaving it again for Wagstaff. Cross towards McRae, and Richards is in there. It really allowed Richards to go very loose on that far post to Manchester City then. Donaghy. Bell. Towers. Comes back to Bell again. Donaghy, Law, Towers once more, Munro cutting it out again, that could have been dangerous, and uh, it's young Sunderland right back there in the thick bit in defence who got it away. Bailey, oh, what a bad ball, just about the first bad ball he's played this afternoon, but now it's Summerby for Manchester City. Sunderland back to Palmer. Looking around to pick up Pierce. Again, waxed after Bailey. And now Marsh picking up the loose one with Tars having won it. Lee. Oh, he shrugged his way past Monroe, but he couldn't get past the call. And now it's Bailey. Certainly the only thing that's lacking at the moment is goals, because the uh, football has been very attractive indeed. Richards. Rather an ambitious ball there that fell short. And now it's Colin Bell. Here's Marsh again. To Lee. Will Marsh get in? No. Parkin can turn it back quite safely to Pierce. Palmer. There's Richards, offside. <laughs> Top scorer last season with 30 odd goals, 33 John Richards, and uh, he's also had a 17 this season. They're a long time getting this. The Situation going because Doyle, I think, has got a little bit of a knock. But I think referee Wallace was saying, if you want to get it attended to, I'm afraid you'll have to go off. Call having a battle with uh, Dennis Law and Rowe here. Now Dugan versus Booth, and it's Booth pushing down on the Doog. Free kick to Wolves. Now will Parkin take it? I think Parkin's going to take it. It certainly will be Dugan will be one that he'll aim for. Well, his aim wasn't very good. Mind you, uh, Doyle's heading wasn't all that good either. And it's with Wagstaff for Wolves. Getting the cross in, and again, Dugan was right in there. But that time, Booth just got enough of a contact. Francis Lee. Marsh. The through ball for Colin Bell, and again, good defence there by John McCall. They say he's the most underrated uh, player in the first division, and McCall has uh, stuck well to Frankman Road, making a formidable barrier at the back there for Wolves. Here's Bailey. Hibbett turned on this time for Sunderland. Now, can Sunderland get a shot in? Here's Richards there, too. Sunderland again, oh, and Wolves 
tried to make it too good a chance when there really was a very presentable one in the first place there to Alan Sunderland. Law now for Manchester City. Donaghy. Pace for the moment has slackened a little bit. The players feeling this Wembley turf, but here's Marsh. Donaghy. Lee. Played for Towers. Everything concentrated on the edge of that area now as Bell and Parkin and McCall. All contest for the ball, and it's McCall who finds Wagstaff. Parkin. Bailey to Sunderland. Played again accurately this time for Richards. Now has he got the pace to get beyond Doyle? Almost got that left foot shot in. Hibbert playing it back to Wagstaff, lying back. Such a foxy character, David Wagstaff. Former Manchester City player, of course, way back. Playing a little bit deep. Stringing out some great passes there for Dugan and Richards at the moment, Wagstaff. And so too is Mike Bailey on the ball at the moment. Four Wolves. Here's Munro. Richards. Chance to cross that one, but uh, not cross too accurately. So those two marksmen, Dugan, we see there. Richards we saw a moment ago. As yet, not on target for Wolves. Still nil-nil, though. And neither is uh, Mike Summerby. Had a fairly quiet game so far, Michael Summerby. And Francis Lee. Nice backward header there by Bell. Pardo going in. Parkin beaten by Summerby, and Parkin is injured, and Summerby goes on. Played back for Towers, and there was a misunderstanding there between Bell and Towers. And there's a free kick given to Manchester City. Well, Towers is injured here, Parkin is injured there. Neither, I think, badly hurt. Doyle has had his troubles as well. Talking to uh, lines with Mr. Williams. Being told there should be no coaching from the bench, I think. But in fact, it's not coaching from the bench because it's a little bit of treatment for Mike Doyle. Derek Parkin is all right again. But uh, not yet Tony Towers. There's been entertainment in this uh, cup final so far for everybody here. Whether you're in the Royal Box, whether you're standing behind a goal, I think most people would agree that uh, there's been a fair bit of entertainment value. Well, those two there, Bell and Marsh, deciding how this free kick is going to be taken for Manchester City. Well, maybe it's a little more than that. There's the wall they've got to pierce. And there's another pierce they've got to pierce, Gary Pierce. And that's the view he's got, wanting the wall to give him at least a view of it. The wall's got to go back ten yards now, as both Parkin and Towers are all right again. A free kick to Manchester City. Now, what are they going to come up with this time? Marsh. Oh, pushed away right at the very last by Pierce. A good save by him, because it was another of those Rodney Marsh spectaculars. Curling it, but not curling it quite enough. So Pierce did well. Here's the corner. Hit a lot firmer that time, and not away yet. Wagstaff following it out, and a goal kick. Well, that's one of his specialities, Rodney Marsh, the bender. Pierced it so well. Well, 
Well, the kick's got to be taken again, possibly because the ball didn't go outside the area. Maybe they didn't take it from the right side. So a goal kick then to uh, Wolves to be taken by their goalkeeper, Gary Pierce. Straight to Tars. Munro heading that one away to Hibbit. Pardo turning it in again. Munro up once more. Bailey helping it on its way. Finding Palmer. Doyle in first, intercepting it well, but the header only goes to David Wagstaff. Look at that for a beautiful pass this time to Hibbert. And this is a chance now for Richards. Oh, and he's fine. Again, it started with Wagstaff, turned on again, and Richards for a moment seemed to be in there clearly with a clean pass. But it went wide. And McRae coming out so quickly himself no good at all. So McRae getting treatment there from Terry Alcock. players in this uh, Wembley Cup final, two great extroverts wanting to pull out something uh, to put Manchester City in front again now still nil-nil the youngster learning I would have thought with every minute of this Cup final game by young Jeff Palmer, only 19 in his first season So McRae all right. And it's a goal kick then to be taken by Keith McRae for Manchester City. Summerby to Bell. McCall. Wagstaff. Rifling that pass to Sunderland. Didn't quite uh, get the proper hold on it then. Bell to Donaghy. Munro, Lee. A little flick and Bell leaving it for Marsh, but Bailey was there first. Hibbit going in, Towers going in. Bell going in and Towers again, and finally it comes free for Manchester City, and it's Donaghy. Here's Marsh in a bit of space now. Still with Rodney Marsh until Mike Bailey, who really has uh, kept Wolves going so well so far this afternoon. If Wolves have the slight edge in this game so far, it's mostly due to uh, Mike Bailey in the middle of the field, as well as to Frank Monroe at the back. But Bailey, who really has dominated the midfield, Helped by Hibbert, and at the moment they're rather subduing the likes of uh, Towers and Marsh and Bell. Bailey this time for Sunderland, in went Donaghy. Here's McCall. Left-footed, but not quite accurate enough. Wagstar coming in from that touchline again. Slipping Pardo. Can he do the same to Bell? There's the cross again, Doyle only half got ahead to that one, and Donaghy just saved the corner. Actually, that was hit very firmly and dipping all the time by Wagstaff, and uh, not surprising that Doyle misjudged it a little. So Dugan waits. So too does John Richards. And it's Bailey who will take the throw. 
might expect a longish one from Mike Bailey, the Wolves skipper. No, it's a short one. To Alan Sunderland. Now with Palmer. Well, acrobatically getting it away to Pardo. Here's Wagstaff again, a little touch now. Give it in a bit of space and a chance to cross it again. That hard hit cross. And Donaghy now to Towers. Nice pass there to Somerby. First time we've seen Mike Somerby on this side of the field. Marsh. Taking a little time to build up there. And Wolves have got a lot of players back. But uh, Lee. And now Marsh again. Tucked through again for Law. Lee hit first time. And again it's fine. Certainly a contrast in the way these two sides come forward with the little flicks, little bits of graceful football there from Manchester City and the much more direct and at the moment more dangerous looking probes of Wolves. Lee a back flick, Monroe. Now Palmer. Richards versus Doyle. Palmer. Bailey. We saw that Hibbert was free, but he went off Marsh to Lee. Law is up in front. Somerby is there to a bad pass, though, by Francis Lee. Give him parking his chance, and he made the most of it. Dugan now for Sunderland. And away go Wolves, and Dugan is there to pick up the pieces again. Played back for Hibbert. Wagstaff again waiting on the touchline. A Wolves player down an injured, I think it's Derek Dugan. He got hit in the face there. But here's Wagstaff coming on. Sunderland trying to get a 1-2 going. And I think that's going to be a free kick to Manchester City. Now by Wagstaff. So Derek Dugan can get some treatment now from Sammy Chung. crowd here today in every respect so the old warriors all right Derek Dugan Took quite a knock there by the look of it Call in with the header, Sunderland two. And Dugan beaten by Tommy Booth. And now Towers to Marsh with two minutes to go to half time. What a good time for anybody to score, let alone in the cup final as Lee tries to get in the shot. Sunderland is there too, and it's Hibbert who gets the long ball away. Booth taking no chances, but Wolves will get the throw. Dugan was hoping that someone would be up uh, quickly enough. Hibbert. Bailey again. Marsh was claiming that was handball. It's with Palmer. And now Sunderland. Back for Palmer again. Now, is this the moment? Hibbert with the shot! scores 
Rodgers. Donaghy. And now it's Towers to Marsh. A deep cross, some of it on the far side, and that time it was Derek Parkin tucking it away for the corner. Tremendous incentive now to Wolves. They came here slightly the underdogs. So important that they hold out now to half time. Somerby with the corner. In injury time at the end of the first half. Booth is in there. And Munro, who's had a storming first half, gets it away for Wolves. Dugan is there. And now it's Lee. They really have been stung now, Manchester City. Looking to put things right. Lee going in. And Hibbert passed back to Pierce. Now Palmer for Wolves. Here's Dugan. There really is a spring in that stride still, and that pass didn't quite come off for Alan Sunderland, though. McRae gathers. Mind you, Manchester City were behind when they were here in 1970 against the West Bromwich Albion and came back to win 2-1. But there's Richards going in now and McRae gathering it well, taking quite a buffeting there from John Richards. It's a free kick to uh, Manchester City. So Kenny Hibbett, the man who only came in at the last moment, it was between him and Barry Powell, and Bill McGarry decided that he would uh, not risk Barry Powell, who was a little short of match fitness. And that gamble certainly has come off. Especially for all the fans who've come down from the Midlands to support the Wolves here at Wembley. And now it's Munro. Donaghy into space for Marsh, but that space is filled again by McCall. Two minutes of injury time at the end of the first half, and Parkin goes racing in there to turn it back. Referee looking at his watch for the end of the first half. Palmer taking it up again for Wolves. Bailey. Goodness, if anybody deserves to be in the lead this uh, afternoon, it's Mike Bailey. Free kick to Wolves again, and it's Bailey who's going to take it. Fantastic inspiration to his side, that number four. But he's left it to young Jeff Palmer. Almost the last kick of the first half. Free kick then for Wolves towards John Richards. Oh, and McRae completely missed that one. Well, that was a funny old piece of goalkeeping, to be honest. He was under pressure from uh, John Richards. But McRae holding his head in the first place and his back in the second. Well, it was a free kick. Back header there by Bell. And a free kick. Again to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Nearly four minutes of injury time played at the uh, end of this first half. Munro with it to Mike Bailey. Played again here for Palmer. Can he keep it in? He can. It's hit first time, but it'll go behind. And that's a goal kick. Summerby a back header. Munro tidying it up well, but he uh, took a push in the back there, the Manchester City player, so it's a free kick now to City. Really want to get on with it to try and get one back before half-time. 1-0 down, Donnick is cross, Pierce is in there, and he had to punch that one away as Lee went in. And in fact, he's being applauded by his teammates because he changed his mind at the last moment. 
as Lee went in. Pierce, I think, in the first place, thought about catching it. Really fisted it away. The boy became too dangerous as the whistle goes for half time. Mike Bailey, the skipper of Wolves, who's inspired them into this one goal lead at half time. A goal that has been scored by Kenny Hibbett, the man who only came into the side this morning. Wolves, impressive in the way that they've been so direct in their attacking. Manchester City, fanciful, but as yet not very effective. The Wolves crowd, delighted with the way it's gone so far. And I think we can promise you a scintillating second half as we leave you with a half-time score here at Wembley in this League Cup final. Manchester City nil, Wolves 1, and we'll be back too.